All right, folks, you know you're in for a treat when you hear that tune because it's time for another week of the Rec Poker Podcast. I've got the best job in the world. I get to hang out here every Monday night and talk with my poker friends about what's going on in the poker world. My name is Jim Reed. I'm Bluffsterini in the home game and at Rec Poker Jim on Twitter. Um, I have to shout out our amazing sponsors, the Running Aces Hotel Racetrack and Casino, because without their support, there would be not, uh, there never would have been a rec poker. I think it's fair to say they were a supporter way back in the olden days when we were getting this thing started under the helm of uh, Steve Fredland. And so Running Aces, thank you so much for your support. Of course, our premium members are the bedrock of what we do here at Rec Poker. We got to thank our premium members. Their $15 a month helps us keep the lights on here and supports what we're doing. Our newest premium member, Marie Peters, has been a community member for a while. It's nice to be seeing Marie back around again. Marie, thank you so much for your support. And um, she's a fun follow on Twitter, too. I won't dox her. Um, but uh, if you connect with Marie in our home game club uh, or in our website community there, um, you can have some fun uh, hanging out with her on Twitter as well. Um, so thank you, Marie. Thank you to all our premium members. Thank you to the sponsors. And thank you to the Wrecking Crew. Because like I say, you get used to hearing my voice on Monday nights. But I'm just the guy they get hosting the podcast. I am one of a crew of folks that make all the magic happen here at Rec Poker. And if you want to find out more about them, you can go to rec.poker slash crew. Or you can listen up because you're going to meet a few of them right here tonight. Hey, my name is Ben Enslow. I'm BJM in 96 on Twitch. You guys can find my rest of my socials there, and uh, you'll see me as East Coast Bitter in the home game. My name is Joe Coolis. Uh, you can find me at Joe Cool PhD, cool with a K on Twitter, and Elvita11 in the home game. And I'm John Somsky, Poker Geek MN everywhere. And I'm Rob Washam, and I'm Rab Man 50 just about everywhere. And uh, that's everybody that made it tonight on the Wrecking Crew. But if you do, I encourage folks, go check out rec.poker slash crew. You can all see all the smiling faces of all the different magic makers because um, not everyone can make it to the podcast every week. But we do appreciate the contributions um, and support from everyone here at Rec Poker, community members, premium members, Wrecking Crew members, uh, DreamWork. Teamwork makes the dream work. <laughs> and we have a lot of fun doing that over here at Rec Poker. So I'm excited. We're going to be talking to Tara Smith, the president of the WPA. That's the Women's Poker Association, if you don't know. But you will by the time the show is over. Unfortunately, um, as has happened a couple times recently, our guest hasn't been able to make this particular time while we're doing the broadcast live on YouTube. So um, we had to record the interview at a different time. But don't worry. Uh, we're still going to have our live prize here for the folks that braved the snow and rain to get here in the chat box tonight. You're going to get a chance to win a free month at Rec Poker or a free month at 100K Studios or PokerCoaching.com or Range Trainer Pro or Learn Pro Poker. That's just the tip of the iceberg, folks. Uh, our training, our part, our learning partners here at Rec Poker know that uh, rec poker, recreational poker players are the future of the game. And that's why all these amazing training sites like to work with us to help uh, bring recreational poker players up through the ranks and turn them into killers on the felt and having a great time while they do. So um, we're going to throw to our interview quick, uh, shortly with Tara, and then we'll come back. We'll talk about some home game clubs. Uh, results. We'll do our food bank uh, raffle, and we'll talk about some um, upcoming events uh, that are going on around Rec Poker as well. I will tease a couple right now. I'll just say, folks, if you go to the free Rec.Poker forums, there's a thread going on right now about WSOP 2023 dates. And if folks are looking for a roommate or someone to defray the cost of your trip, or if you want to have a vote on when, what dates we should have our Rec Poker meetup in Las Vegas this June, then uh, go get a free Rec Poker account. Uh, all it takes is an email address and a, and a smile. Um, and go sign, uh, go check out the forum post there, add your dates and see if there's, uh, an overlap when you're going to be down there. We could be down there too. Um, also, oh yeah, Joe. I just want to say very quickly that we're, this is not a dating site. This is just, <laughs> you cannot actually find dates here. It's the dates of the actual tournament, uh, just for legal reasons. I want to make sure we're clear about that. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. I appreciate that. Um, we're talking about dates on the calendar, uh, days and nights where we will be spending time in Las Vegas. If you're looking for a, a platonic roommate to be uh, sharing a hotel room with or an Airbnb or something like that. Excellent clarification, Joe. Thank you very much. 
Um, also, uh, I want to say that uh, Peel is back this week. Uh, now that Marek Madness is out of the way, um, boy, what a treat that was. And congratulations to uh, Keith Monkey System Brandt for his amazing accomplishment. Um, Keith Jones, a valiant second place. Um, well fought to all our 16 contestants and a shout out to everyone in the booth and um, Taylor Moss in particular for helping that out. But now that Thursday nights are free, um, Taylor is still going to be streaming his own play every Wednesday night at twitch.tv slash rec poker. But on Thursday nights, we'll be welcoming Eric Jin back with his play Explain and Learn. That's every Thursday night um, in April and forever going forward. Uh, he's back in the rotation. So I'm looking forward to that. And finally, um, if you like poker deals, check out the Rec Poker Twitter and Facebook pages this week. We've got some amazing deals in particular coming from the Poker Forge and PokerCoaching.com. If you want to do some really good discounts happening this week, we're recording this on April 3rd. Um, if you, you still have a few days when this comes out to go check out the Rec Poker Twitter handle, the Rec Poker Facebook page, and you'll find some fantastic deals. All right. But enough about us. Let's learn about the Women's Poker Association and Tara Smith, and then we'll be right back here to go over some home game results and talk about some cool stuff coming up at Rec Poker. All right. Well, I'm so excited. Uh, we've got Tara Smith here in the room. Um, Tara is the president of the Women's Poker Association, um, but that's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to her role in the world of poker. So first, I just want to say, uh, Tara, thanks so much for coming on the Rec Poker Podcast. This is going to be a treat. Absolutely. We've been working on this for a while. So <laughs> we have. Yeah, exactly. Hey, busy the universe lives. Has right? aligned. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny. We talk about this on the show a lot. You know, we're all recreational poker players. Uh, we've got jobs. Some of us like Rob are retired, the lucky duck. Uh, but most of us have nine to fives or something like that. And poker is one of these things that we kind of have to fit around the rest of our lives. Um, you're in a particularly unique spot, I think, because uh, you're a player, you're an active player. Uh, of course, you yourself have a job as well, um, but you're very involved, uh, like some of us are, with these other aspects of the poker industry, um, particularly at the moment with the Women's Poker Association. Um, so I guess, can we just start, I, I usually like to ask our guests to kind of define their own space in the poker world. So how, if you were meeting someone in an elevator or a cocktail party, uh, how would you describe to them your role in the world of poker? Right. Um, I mean, I think... A quick explanation is I'm extremely passionate about people and poker and women in poker, especially, right? Um, and that started 20 years ago. And so now that I get the opportunity to, you know, sit amongst some other really strong minded, you know, female poker players and really try to push the needle forward to bring more women into the game, I can't think of a better place to be, especially in this climate right now. Um, and so I would say an advocate for women in poker and passionate about people, passionate about poker is really high like to sum up my thoughts and feelings and how I would describe myself. Well, you're fitting in with a good crowd here then. That feels like a really good overlap for what we're working on here at Rec Poker as well. Um, so we'll talk about the WPA a little bit, uh, but I want to start with your own personal story. Um, so you've been involved in poker for a long time. Uh, I, you know, I, I always hate to ask the old, how'd you get started in poker? Poker. Right? <laughs> but, but no, seriously, but but uh, uh, help me out. How, how did you start in poker and what drew you to the game particularly? And what was right. that experience like getting involved as a player? Right. It's so funny. And you're right. Everybody does have a story. I mean, I learned how to play five card poker for my grandfather when I was like five years old. Yeah, I too. had no idea that today I would be not only working in the poker community as my career, but then also having the opportunity to volunteer and advocate for women in poker. I mean, it blows my mind, right? To do something you love and that you're passionate about. But I started, you know, playing five card poker at a very young age. When I was about early 20s, of course, I think like everybody, they had bar leagues popping up all over the place. And so I really got introduced to probably, I would say, playing competitively outside of my kitchen table at that point. Um, and I immediately fell in love to the game. It, it was a love affair that I think was from the time the first cart was dealt to me um, that is still ongoing to this day. And so I played in bar leagues for a couple years. And as I realized that there was poker outside of that, I really didn't know, right? You don't know what you don't know. But the second you do, it opens up a whole new world. And so I started playing at a local poker room um, called Daytona Beach Poker Room. That was my first experience. And I'm in Florida. And so at that time, when I started playing, we didn't even have no limit Texas Hold'em. Everything was still a limit game. 
And so I got to sit through that exposure literally at the table the day when they, you know, launched No Limit Poker. And so I got to go through all those highs and lows. And, um, you know, that was like how my journey started. And then from there, like I said, I couldn't get enough. I wanted more. I wanted to understand why more ladies weren't in the game. Um, and I'll try to make this very long explanation a little shorter by saying <laughs> <laughs> I went to the poker manager and I said, why are there no more women than other what I, you know, what I see right here, which is probably like four to five ladies. I said, where are all the women? Why are they not playing? What's happening here? Um, and they didn't have an explanation. And I'm one of these where if I see a problem or have a question, I can't stop until I get the answer, right? And so I immediately started calling what I knew to be the capital of poker, which was Las Vegas. I proceeded to call every single poker room that would not only answer my call, but then give me information and ask them, do you have ladies that play poker? Is there somebody prominent in your community? Who can you link me up with? I have questions and and I want to know, how can we bring more women to the game? And poker room manager, his name was John at the Golden Nugget in downtown Las Vegas. He mentioned the name to me, Lupe Soto. This was 2008. Mm. And he agreed to give me her email address. I emailed her and we had a friendship that started then to this day is still blossoming. She's one of my dearest, closest friends. I love her to death. But that's how I got started into what I'm doing now when it comes to women in poker was literally when I say I turned into a bounty hunter to find out <laughs> who can I talk to about women in poker, that's exactly what I did. And and from there, it just blossomed. I was part of the Ladies International Poker Series. Um, when Lupe established and founded the Women's Poker Association, um, you know, I wanted to be involved with as much as I could to help with this mission of bringing more women to the game. That's fantastic. And, and I think you guys are doing a brilliant job at the WPA and also with some of these other uh, ventures out there. Um, I know the uh, LIPS program has had a great success. And um, it's it just feels like I, I, I hesitate to even talk about this on the show because this is another one of those kind of trite questions where everyone understands that there's a problem that women are underrepresented at the poker tables. Right. And we see online, uh, they're much more uh, equal in terms of demographic for players. But yep. in, li- in live events, we're just not seeing it. Although there is progress being made, I think, and, you know, as we're tracking the metrics for percentage of fields and that kind of thing, I think we are seeing some good uh, right. progress in that direction. But it really, when you look at the data available, it really kind of makes, it makes it hard to avoid the conclusion that there's something about the experience of playing live poker that is making people uncomfortable and disproportionately is making women uncomfortable. Is that a, is that a gross oversimplification? No, I don't think so. And I also feel like we are seeing traction as of late. And I think there's a couple factors, right? We all know social media is huge. So you have the ability to share and expose more than we did 10 years ago, 15 years ago. And so when you see somebody who's doing something that looks interesting to you, I think that's the biggest way to attract more people into the game, right? When you see somebody that shares kind of your same lifestyle and they're doing something that looks interesting and you want to learn more, you're opening the door, right? The other thing too is I feel like uh, poker in general, the poker community, didn't always do a great job of marketing to women, right? They didn't. When you mm. watch the World Series of Poker, think about who our biggest sponsors were. I mean, I remember watching Milwaukee's Best and, you know, uh, Jack's Link Beef Jerky. Those are all great products, but that's really not necessarily what women would gravitate towards to and buy. So I felt like they need to just kind of like tweak and, and just maybe refresh the way that they're marketing in general. So that way we can attract more audiences. You know, let's broaden that horizon a bit. And I think that people are starting to have those conversations. And so those two things alone are going to help. And then when you have organizations like the WPA, we have supporters that are purple tie guys, such as, you know, the wrecking team over here at Rec Poker. Um, and there's a lot of other ladies tours, right? We've got the Ladies International Poker Series. You've got Flip, which is a ladies group. You've got Palan, which is a ladies poker tour group. You know, and there's many more that we could mention, but they're all doing their part to bring more women into the game. And so it's just a much different climate now. And I think that that's only going to grow. I don't think that there's going to be any slowdown happening anytime soon. Yeah, I think so, too. Um, and I think that the poker world is kind of coming around. And, and, you know, it's not just rec poker. There's lots of organizations that aren't even just women focused who are trying to, you know, make the poker world a more encouraging and positive space and just kind of a less vitriolic experience for people. And I think, um, you know, especially, I think, you know, there's a lot of overlap between, you know, new woman players and new men players when you're 
feeling yourself out and you're, you know, unsure of how things work. And it's, you know, one of your first times in a card room or something like that. I think that's going to be kind of an intimidating situation, uh, no matter who you are. And right. a lot of a lot of the same stuff that that we're trying to do uh, for women specifically is really just a sense of how can we do this more generally for for people throughout the poker world. Right. Absolutely. Go ahead. I think Joe was going to say something. Yeah, Joe, jump in. Yeah, and I mean, I think that if you if you want to look at a kind of a model for how poker needs to progress, you just need to look at the video game marketplace because mm. in the early '80s, the games. I mean, there's clear evidence that it was marketed towards young boys, adolescent boys, and as if adolescent boys did, I'm sorry, adolescent girls did not play video games. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until um, video game makers realized that, oh yeah, they did. It's just that they don't always want, um, you know, big busted women in scantily clad, you know, outfits as the main driver of why a game is great. Right, as their avatars, Um, right. Exactly. And changed it and started marketing it correctly. And even sometimes, you know, in terms of video games, I think that the largest player of video games is actually women. Now they generally play on their phones, they play a different way, but that doesn't mean they don't want to play it. And I think that poker needs to realize that uh, prior to um, getting over the hump and really having women be involved and then addressing the typical misogyny problem that runs with video games you know it's it's not easy for anybody to go play halo uh or actually that dates me so call of duty Uh, (laughs) (laughs) um, you know without having somebody screaming at you and and even if you're you know a fully grown man it's like oh you know i don't want to go on there you know i'm just going to get yelled at and it's the same thing with poker to some degree maybe to a lesser degree but not really that it's really hard for men and for women to kind of gain that entry, as you said, at the table, because they're going to try to use some intimidation or aggressive uh, aspects to uh, gain an advantage. Right, right. And I think a lot of people do that as that's part of the insecurity in their game, right? When you have mm-hmm. something new that comes, you don't know anything about it. You don't know how they play. You don't know what they do. You don't know anything. So if you can intimidate them before they even make a move, you kind of already have an edge. So I feel like a lot of it is some sometimes some of their poker game. Um, you know, there we all know poker is an interesting game with a lot of interesting people that play. Um but I mean, <laughs> Jim's laughing because he knows interesting people. Really, I've met some of the most <laughs> unique people I've ever met in my entire life sitting at a mm-hmm. poker table. You just you never know what you're going to get, which is, I think, kind of the draw about the game, too. Right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> and, and I just want to real quickly follow up to, so that it didn't leave it hanging. I'm not in any way equivocating how the difficulty it is for a man to come to a table versus a woman, because no, but I don't really feel like I'm going to die or anybody's going to chase me back to the um, parking garage. So they're not the right. same. But but there are right. similarities in some of the things. So. Yeah, that was actually one of the questions I had for Adara, because um, like we, I think there's a clear sense in the poker community that we need to be doing a better job about this. And I think educating women, uh, teaching women the game, that's obviously a part of it. But I think most of the education actually has to fall on the people that are being the dicks at the poker tables. Not to be put too fine a point on it, but right. the guys are the guys are mostly the problem. So right, um, and and I think. You know, with organizations like the Women's Poker Association or Poker Power or uh, LIPS, or, you know, a lot of these other fantastic programs out there, um, I think we got to come up with a way to kind of reach outside that organizational demographic to actually start grabbing some guys by the collar and lapel and shaking them a little bit and um, educating educating them. So I think as a, as as the president of the Women's Poker Association. I guess can you just talk a little bit about what are the what are the goals for the WPA and kind of how how are you uh, how are you choosing the methods by which you're going to achieve those goals? Right, great, great question. Um, I I just want to kind of like piggyback off this conversation we're having when it talks about shaking you know people by their shirt sleeves. Right, um, the WPA has a program called Raise It Up. And basically, it's asking the poker community, players, staff, you know, leadership, let's all 
raise the experience, elevate the game of poker, elevate the experience that all of your players and your staff are having in your room. And I think there's times where each person could individually do a better job on their own behavior, right? Because at the end mm-hmm. of the day, sometimes you're competing for huge prize pools. So it should be taken seriously, right? Um, and so if everyone just takes that, you know, accountability to treat everybody with a little more respect, to make sure you're enjoying yourself and just having a, a better time and making it a little bit more fun, um, then I think you can accomplish both goals. You can still meet your goal of playing seriously, but you can also still treat people with kindness and respect and mm-hmm. just elevate the game in general. And so the Raise It Up program is just that. We're literally asking any poker operators, um, and let's be real, like any establishment these days, they kind of have a policy in place to deal with any type of you know unwanted behavior, right? They have these. We're just asking them to acknowledge that they're going to put that into the forefront of you know the things that they're focusing on within their poker room for the sheer goal of elevating the experience of poker for all players. And hopefully that brings more women to the game. So we've had uh, a lot of traction in that since the beginning of 2023. It was a program that was developed last year, but really put into play heavily the beginning of this year. We've got some rooms that are recommended poker rooms. It's on our website. Um, I'll make sure to share that information with you guys. But the Raise It Up program really is kind of how we're working to accomplish this goal of making it a better place for everyone to be a part of and play. Um, and then some other programs that we have that kind of, you know, really complement that is our advocate program, right? Mm-hmm. We've got advocates that are throughout the United States. We're expanding into the, you know, European market heavily, um, and then internationally, you know, even beyond that. Um, and basically we celebrate final tables, the advocates that they're playing in these tournaments, they'll be there to mingle with the ladies, just interact, just make sure everyone feels welcomed and just make it a fun event, right? If you're having fun doing something, you're guaranteed to come back. If it's a miserable time, you're not going to want to come back. And so that's what we are. We just want to be a resourceful, fun, engaging kind of experience um, at the same time, helping people celebrate their successes at the poker table, right? Mm. The other part of our advocate program is something that you guys know very much about, which is our Purple Tie Guy program. Yeah. Yes. As you guys see, Jim's got his patch on. I can see it from here. Um, right there. Exactly. And that that basically is what it is, right? It's just letting women know that they have an ally. If you see a man that has a purple tie guy patch or a bracelet on or something of that nature, without even speaking to them, you already know that they're supporting the initiatives of the WPA. You already know that they're encouraging to bring more women into the game. And so you've got an ally right there. Um, And so I think the advocate program is very complementary to the Raise It Up program because one is really focused on the rooms and the other is focused on the people. You put those two things together, I think we've got a winning combination. Yeah, me too. And I really want to harness this idea here because I think, like I mentioned before, um, the people that need to do most of the changing are the guys that are creating these environments. <laughs> so we need to reach them and we need to convince them to kind of uh, be that agent of change um, in, in the poker world themselves. So I've got two questions for you then. Um, yep. I think this is a question because people ask me from time to time because they know that I'm sensitive to this issue and, uh, you know, It's something that's important to a lot of people. So people ask me from time to guys ask me from time to time. um, Like what is that's good. Well, no, yeah, yeah. Oh, I I think so too. And I think more Mm -hmm. people, I think more guys than we than we give credit to, will kind of fall in line if they if 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 they're given the opportunity to do so. Um, Yeah. Yeah, I I honestly do. Um, And so part of it comes to sort of a sense of like mentorship being a positive example. And I think the, uh, the purple tie guy program is a great example of that. Um, and so one, one of the questions that I get is like specifically at the table, mm-hmm. how can, how can I be a better ally? And, and usually what I tell them is that actually, you know, a lot of the ways that you can be a better ally is not at the table. It's in the conversations that you have with people about poker and about women in poker, about women generally. And, right. Um, that kind of all has to happen off the felt, but specifically at the table, I think some guys feel this kind of tension between wanting to help, but not wanting to kind of like white knight it and kind of like just come in and like save the day. And, you know, so not everyone feels like they need saving. Um, Right. So what can can you talk just a little bit about like how to help, how to help at the table or like what's the best way to, to be a resource without kind of dominating the entire situation right well three things right you might have to remind me the third because i'm older and i have short term (laughs) the third has to do with the rooms but the first two right just think about it like this if something's happening at your table 
I think you know when it's just probably not in the best light because everybody, whether you're involved, whether it's directed at you or not, or you're the aggressor, you'll have a pit in your stomach. You know, I mm-hmm. think whether you're involved mm-hmm. or not, you're sitting there playing, you're like thinking to yourself, damn, this is really uncomfortable, you know, for me, and I'm not even involved. Imagine how the people who are, are involved are feeling, right? So if you feel that, then you already know it's probably something that needs to have somebody step in. You're hoping the person would have enough confidence to be able to stand up for themselves and say, hey, listen, but if they don't, and then the next person in line is the dealer and they're not, then that would probably be the time where I would say to myself, if I leave here tonight and I don't say something, I'm going to go to bed tonight thinking about that. I think that that's kind of your threshold. That's your answer. So I would probably say something at that point. Right. Um, And we all know, you know what that feeling feels like. And so that would Mm -hmm. be my kind of like, just, you know, suggestion on the men. If you're sitting at a table and you see something happening and you know, it's probably to a level that it shouldn't be at because you have that, you know, ugly, nasty gut feeling, then maybe you say something. Um, The other thing is when I was mentioning about the room, right. When we talk about the Raise It Up program, we're asking them to put the Raise It Up program into the forefront of all of the things that they're doing in their poker room. And that means equipping their staff with ways to have conflict resolution and ways to deal with conflict resolution. And so we're hoping that if you are a poker player in a room and you think that they could do better with that, maybe that's what you mentioned to them. The WPA has a really great Raise It Up program. I think it would be very beneficial if you would look into that and become you know, a recommended Raise It Up room and acknowledge that you're going to take these things seriously, put that into the forefront. And I think those conversations are going to be helpful as well with kind of curtailing this uh you know behavior i guess great answer joe yeah i was just going to say that i think that when you look from a psychological perspective in terms of what are the things that help people in different crises um you know the things that get in the way is is something called the bystander intervention effect where people tend to diffuse the responsibility they're not sure if they're supposed to actually step in but if just one person will step in um usually what happens and is lots of people start to step in right and the second aspect is is usually um, what you find is that people who are willing to step in generally have some sort of training or some under, some specialty training or understanding of the emergency that they're dealing with. And I think that for a lot of people in those situations at the poker table, uh, as Jim alluded to, they don't know what they're supposed to do. They don't, you know, right. they, they barely know how to shuffle chips. And, and now they're <laughs> having to figure out, well, who do I talk to? The dealer seems to be engaging with this guy or letting it go. What do I do? And I think that just by bringing in the people like the floor and saying, well, you're the people with this expertise um, or by intervening even just a little bit and saying, hey, knock it off. Somebody else right. will call the floor and say, yeah, I thought that was kind of rude. Um, they should He shouldn't be talking to her that way. Bring the floor over and let the person with the skills deal with it so that you don't have to feel like, well, I got to be a white knight in this situation. All I need to be is somebody who starts the ball rolling or yep. gets everybody else to say, yeah, we all kind of agree. This is this is this is this feels icky and it needs to stop. Yep. That icky feeling right there, Joe. That's what I'm talking mm-hmm. about. You know, you know if it feels icky. And something as simple as Joe just said, just to say, hey, knock it off. That's enough to kind of like jar, you know? And really everyone's paying attention except for maybe the guy with his headphones and his sunglasses and his in his hoodie on, right? Everybody yep. else is seeing what's happening. So it's not like you're the only one that's feeling that way. Yep. Um, well, I, I know, uh, so the Women's Poker Association is free to join, um, yep. and if people go to uh, WPA.poker, you guys got yep. the dot .poker, all the, all the cool we kids did. are doing the dot .poker, <laughs> that's what it's all about, good for you. Um, so what what do people, uh, so, and is it is it open to women uh, only as members, and then there's other ways for men to support the cause and get involved? Right. I mean, now it's not because we've got the Purple Tie Guy initiative that's part of our advocate program. It is not. We can have, you know, if you want to join, it's typically because you want to be a Purple Tie Guy. Those are the men that we we see that are trying to become involved with the WPA. Um, And so, no, we want supporters for everybody because here's the thing, right? I guarantee Jim, Joe, you probably both know a handful of women that you think might love the game, but just haven't been introduced, right? Everybody knows somebody who doesn't know about the game or everybody knows somebody who does play the game, but maybe hasn't taken that next step. We all know somebody. And so I think it's really encouraging to have men join, become Purple Tie Guys. And I think it's obviously great when we have more women join because that just creates more exposure. And I said this earlier before we were recording, but I'm going to say it here because it's so important. But I think community is key. Community is key for everything. When you are surrounded uh with people that have like-minded, you know, intentions, like-minded passions. Um, I think it just really serves a good purpose. It's good for the soul, but it's also good for what it is you're focusing on. And in this case, it's poker. 
Yeah, I totally agree. Um, when, when members join Rec Poker, for instance, what I often hear from them is, I've got great friends and I love poker, but my friends don't love poker. And I right. just, I don't have this community of like-minded people to talk to about this thing that I love. And right. I and I think, um, especially women, uh, don't have the same, they're not, they're not as exposed to it because it's been this male centric, uh, sport for, or hobby for so long. Um, that community element is key. And I think I, I can't stress this enough. If you're listening to the podcast and you're, and you're like me 10 years ago, doing everything on your own, learning in a silo, uh, I get it, but you're doing yourself a disservice by not joining a free group like WPA or, or Rec Poker or, or other fantastic groups out there. I don't mean to just yep. paint it like the two of us. I think that element of community, that connection, that engagement is more important than you think. And I think it's the kind of thing that you might not understand how valuable it is until you've actually experienced it yourself. I agree a hundred percent. Joe, do you have something? Yeah, I, I was just going to say that I think that it, it, poker is not something that you can easily do just every once in a while and Mm. so it's nice to be able to have some fun doing it like talking about wine you don't drink if you drink wine all the time right you're an alcoholic and that's not a good thing that you want to do um but but in order to in order should i show my coffee cup again i was gonna say don't pull out the coffee mug again there tara (laughs) don't pull out my coffee mug here (laughs) (laughs) i love it but but people like wine because they like talking about wine you know there's a movie sideways is kind of about that about being able to to have a group that's interested in doing it and i think that a lot of um these organizations provide that uh niche for people to be able to talk about it and study it and learn more about it and and see it as something that goes beyond just taking money putting on a table and then leaving the casino without any money i mean you don't talk as you, you can talk about it in terms of slots right in terms of some strategies um and that's actually a part of it people get together and say oh well i'm playing this machine because it's right. the one that's going to pay out and so on um and without that i don't know that people play as much because what's the fun really if you can't share it with somebody and i think that poker has that same aspect i love that as, line yeah mm. um, share you know share uh, you, Share a bad beat, right? You'll you'll see my next video that talks about it, uh, about why bad beat stories are okay, but also sharing in the winning and sharing in the learning and sharing about, well, I learned how to take this, you know, this play or this line and that made all the difference, so. Right. It's so true. I, you know, I think about, I've been going to, uh, and, you know, obviously every summer is the ladies, you know, poker week. It happens kind of in the middle of the WSOP summer series. Um, And now it's kind of, uh, you know, jovially known as the summer camp of the WSOP, right? <laughs> and there's people that I've seen every single summer for the past 16 years, right? And you may not see them any other time during the year, but when you come back together, you literally pick up right where you left off. And I think that's just incredible. You know, they. I'm sure Joe probably has this ingrained, but they always say, right, that if you're friends with somebody for seven years or more, they're going to be a lifelong friend. Mm. And and I kind of believe that because these people that I met some years ago, I still to this day, you know, some of them I'm closer than with others. But again, you've got that core group of people that you know every summer you're going to see them. And it's just exciting to know that there are people that are there with the same goals and focus as you. And you get to talk about it. You get to share experiences with, with them, you know, have great dinners. And it's just, it creates lifelong memories, lifelong friendships. And I mean, poker for me has just been enriching in other ways other than just monetarily, you know? So I want to talk a little, oh, sorry, Joe, please, please. Poker's enriching monetarily. Can you can you help me out with that? <laughs> if you go to the the correct field, listen. I'm a, like a predominantly cash player. I really only ever play tournaments heavily when I hit Vegas. I mean, sometimes I'll do around town, but I love cash games. For me, it's like every new hand is like a new life, right? Mm. <laughs> you always have the opportunity to re-up and tournaments are just a different structure, different strategy. It's like, you're thinking about the end and the beginning. You, I mean, you really are, right? The ultimate goal is to take everybody else out. You're the last one. Cash games are different. Each hand is a new life. Um, and so for me, that that's that's my sweet spot. <laughs> I love it. Um, so we, uh, we have these rec poker patches awesome. and uh, we share them with our members or our live events. Uh, people can pick them up in our shop, that kind of thing. Yep. Um, when, when Lupe, when Lupe and I first started talking again, this was a, a while ago, 
um, we had a whole bunch of uh, of these little little uh, beauties that we would also in- include as as we were giving out those kind of patches. I'll be honest with you, I've run out. We've given okay. out all the uh, purple tie guy patches. So after we hang up, we'll have to figure out a way for you to send me a new box so I can start um, sending them out again. But if folks Absolutely. aren't rec poker, if folks aren't rec poker members. Um, it, guys in particular, and they want to get more involved and show their support for the cause. Uh, what's the best way for them to make that inroads uh, with you guys and to ask for some patches and to and to start kind of showing their support at the tables? Yep. Thank you so much for that, Jim. Um, on our website, we've got all of our patches available. We have them in patch kits where you can get a purple tie guy or a WPA or a combination of both. And like you mentioned too, um, you know, we don't host poker tournaments or anything of that nature, but anytime there's an opportunity for the WPA to have a table at like a larger poker series, we do that, right? So we can share our initiatives and, and introduce people to WPA. So when we do those types of things, we absolutely also have patches that we hand out. Um, we will have a booth during, uh, um, the ladies event at the WSOP this summer. So if you don't get a chance to go on our website and get your patches before then come meet us at our booth and we'll be more than happy to hand out some at that time. That was a fun booth this last year. You had a great yep. crowd down there and yeah, uh, people were a having time. a good time. Yeah. And uh, I, I really like the, um, there is this real camaraderie. I, I'm, I'm not just the WSOP, but all these tours uh, where yeah. people are getting together to play together um, I really feel like, and you guys had some uh, good speeches there at the ladies event and that kind of thing as well. Um, I think that just talking again about that kind of community element, I think it's something that we all need more of in our lives, particularly these days where we're all feeling especially isolated, I think, compared to how we might be normally. Right. So I, gonna, uh, I have one other thing I wanted to say just because yeah. Joe's on and we all know what Joe's background is, but I always tell people this all the time. I think that playing poker is such a parallel to your real life. You know what I mean? Mm. The way that you handle bad beats, the way that you handle wins, the way that you handle losses, you can tell a lot about somebody and how they act at the poker table. I can guess that that's probably very similar to how they act in their real life, right? And so when I come across somebody who is just a really great person at the table, you just it's engaging and it's fun. Even though you might be exchanging chips with them, I already know that's somebody that I want to build a connection with outside of this game. And it always turns out to be the right move. So I would Mm. say pay attention. Parallels on the Mm. poker table are very much similar to the parallels in life. Emotions, particularly strong ones, tend to be uh, a great revealer of of character mm-hmm. in many respects yep. and uh, how you manage them at the poker i mean you just can't get rid of them i don't care who you are you're going to get excited and, and anxious and so on so it, that's, right. a, that's a good point so let's talk a little bit i want to wrap this up with a little strategy talk tara um so we're we're all familiar with kind of recreational players finding the game loving the game learning and getting better together um can you talk a little bit about sort of some of the common leaks or mistakes that beginner players or recreational players that you're uh, experiencing have and kind of um, maybe some success stories about how WPA or some of the uh, mentors that people find within the organization have helped their uh, members improve? Right. I think especially someone that's new coming into the game, I feel like the biggest thing they're they're lacking is probably confidence in some of the plays that they're making, right? Mm. And so a lot of people right now are focusing on the confidence element of the game, right? I, am I supposed to bet here? Should I play passively? Should I be more aggressive? And I think that is really a huge indicator. Once you make that swing over the fence of having more confidence and being able to be aggressive when you need to be on the poker table, that changes your game tremendously, right? Um, and just for example, like, Ebony Kenny, she's a huge proponent for women in poker. She's a great Mm -hmm. ally for the Women's Poker Association. She's doing a free kind of webinar right now between now and the WSOP um, that's specifically for confidence, right? That's something that she's doing. Poker Power, you know, they have a corporate seat on the WPA board. Um, Obviously, they focus a lot on confidence, right? They want to be able to take these poker skills and allow women to not only have them be fruitful on the poker tables, but translate into real life in the form of confidence and you know, being aggressive in your goals and your moves. And so I think that is probably a core in anybody who's teaching something for new players is confidence. So that way you can make the moves that you need to make when you need to make them and feel confident um, that you're making the right ones. I like that. Um, you've got a bunch of uh, partners with the WPA and um, other affiliated organizations that kind of share a mandate, I think. Um, would you like to just talk about a few of the ones that you feel like are really uh, uh, for for other people? If you're listening and you're enjoying what we're talking about today, 
Um, you might not know about this wealth of these uh, all these organizations out there that are kind of yeah. pursuing a similar mandate. Uh, do you mind just sharing some information about some of the groups that you think are doing a really good job in this in this particular aspect of the poker world? Yeah, absolutely. Especially like for women in poker, you know, there's so many different women's poker groups out there. Um, we've got a women's poker playlist that's on our website. Um, <sighs> and if, right. And if anybody knows of an organization, a group affiliation that they feel like would be a great addition, send it in to us, right? Make a submission because the purpose of that is if you're new to the poker community and you want to know, Hey, where do I, where do I want to go so I can learn something new? Or what's a community that I can join that's free that might have like-minded things they discuss? Or what's a training available? The women Women's Poker Playlist has all those things available to you. Um, and the cool thing is, even though there might be multiple women's poker groups, each one of them kind of has a different focus, right? It's mm. like, how many different variations of cars can you buy in the world, right? They're <laughs> all great cars, but they're all different for a different reason. They they are, are attracted to somebody for a different reason. So I don't think there's anything wrong with having multiple women's groups out there because they're going to be attracted to somebody individually for a different reason. And I think it's important that we get to cover all those aspects. Um, so definitely go to the women's uh, poker playlist. It's on our WPA website. Check it out. There's so many different resources there. Um, and we, we think you'll find something for everybody there. Nice. And I'll put I'll put these links in the show notes as well. So if you're listening along, um, you could just go click on the show notes and you'll find the, the ways to connect with Tara and the WPA. Um, but Tara, is it is the best way to get involved just to go to WPA.poker? Yep, the best way. Or we are WPA Global on all, all our social media. So Twitter, Instagram, um, you can follow us there and stay connected. Or of course, go to the website, always lead back to the Women's Poker Association. Yeah. And if folks uh, want to get in touch with you, if they found something uh, particularly inspiring or interesting from the conversation today, are you also active on social media or do you know better? I am. <laughs> I am. <laughs> so I am on Twitter as uh, Miss Poker Mafia. <laughs> Oh, nice. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Nice. So we'll make sure that that links in there too, folks. If uh, if you have more questions for Tara uh, or if you want to get more involved, um, that'll be the way to do it. Um, Tara, is there anything else that you'd like to talk about today? It, it, this is such a, 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 I mean, we could talk for a whole other hour about this thing. Um, I think we're going to have to have you back on the show at some point soon anyway. But um, for the conversation today, if we missed anything or is there anything that you feel like uh, deserves a little more explanation or coverage? Um, no, I just want to say that I really appreciate you guys, uh, you know, allowing me the opportunity to talk about the Women's Poker Association, um, because besides having community, I think exposure is really important. So I guarantee mm. that somebody within your community of rec poker is going to hear this and maybe know somebody that they can refer to the WPA that didn't know that we were there to support and celebrate. So I'm just really grateful that you guys have given us this opportunity to talk about the WPA. Right on. Well, it's it's, uh, it's mutual. I think this is such an important subject. Uh, not only for poker players, but I think this is a bit of a microcosm for humankind overall. We've got, you know, anything we can do to make that problem better. <laughs> this right. feels like we're moving, we're moving in the right direction. Well, um, thank you, uh, Joe, for your time in the conversation today, and especially uh, Tara Smith. This has been an absolute pleasure. I'm so glad that you were able to find the time to join us, and I can't wait to get to know you a little better um, as we continue to move on through the poker world together. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Jim and Joe. All right, Thanks, Tara. Back to the rest of the show. I just love these offline interviews. I know I say it every time, but like we get back here on the show and it's like, holy cow. I think again, for all we know, that could be the greatest interview, rec the greatest interview anyone has ever had. For all the information we have available right now, that might actually be like a Pulitzer Prize winning interview. I, I think it's fair to say. Who knew all the stuff that was going on with the WPA? I mean, it's amazing. <laughs> it's After amazing. hearing all of that. They're prolific. At Actually, I just one th point of clarification. I do not believe that podcast interviews are eligible <laughs> for a Pulitzer Prize. So, despite how how fantastic, how phenomenal it may have been, I don't believe it would earn a Pulitzer Prize. That makes perfect sense, Joe. Well, the, the team of Reed and Coolest Ass interviewers uh, is, is it's just it's trending on Twitter in terms of how well the interplay works, how one person keeps talking and the other one shuts them down and says, no, 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 it's, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's just yeah. it's poetry. It's, it, yeah. it just, you know, it works well. It, we've got that great give and take, Joe. I'm so glad to join the team. That, but in all seriousness, <laughs> um, it was a really fun interview. Um, Tara had a lot of uh, interesting stuff to say and um, some great ways uh, that lots of uh, lots of other people can get involved with the Women's Poker Association. And um, I do hope people enjoyed that interview. Now, 
Um, before we talk about some home game results, I just want to mention uh, coming up at Running Aces, April 26th through 30th is the $500 buy-in Running Aces anniversary tournament. So there will be multiple day one entries into that, multiple flights. It's going to be a great team, a great crowd as usual. April 26th to 30th, $500 buy-in. Go and have some fun and tell them Rec Poker sent you. Now, just before we dive into the home games, I also want to pause for a brief message from our brand new segment sponsor, just for this week only, the right lane of the highway. Are you spending too much time driving in the left lane of the highway? I know. (laughs) I know what you're thinking. There's got to be a better way. There is. Did you know that the left lane is for passing only? Come spend some time with our uh, segment sponsor this week, the right lane of the highway. The right lane of the highway. Getting us all home faster since 1934. The right lane of the highway. Choose the right lane to get you home safe. All right. Thank you, right lane of the highway. Uh, Your support means a lot to us. And I hope you do. Go check out our sponsor, folks. If you're driving down the highway and you're driving in the left lane, consider shifting over into the right lane. And and while you do so, open the window and shout, Rec Poker, out the window to let them know that we sent you. Because it helps us out a lot if our sponsors know that we're the ones that sent uh, sent you on your way there. So uh, without further ado, John, I think uh, with your multiple sponsors now, um, we can get into some home game results. Yeah, I'm. I am just shocked that the right lane of the highway had the funds to be able to have such a premier sponsorship. Well, for for the really good causes like that, we meet them in the middle because like it's just too important uh, not to get a message out like that. Speaking of which, um, folks, you want to start typing the words "food bank" into the chat. Uh, this is a great time to remind people that food insecurity uh, exists on a spectrum. Uh, You'd be surprised how many people need a little help putting food in their bellies. Um, Might be some people in your neighborhood, in your community, might be some people that you might not expect. Uh, But a great way to help your neighbor and to help the people in your neighborhood and your community is to uh, donate either some time, some money, or some non-perishable food items to your local food bank. And if you just Google food bank near me, uh, you'll find a place that I'm sure could use your help. So uh, please do go ahead and do that. I also, I want to tease, Joe Coolis has talked about um, some interesting ways to generate some, uh, some some fundraising for some local food banks. And we'll probably be talking about that a bit uh, over several podcasts over the next little while. But just to, wet, just to get yourself going, just just take right now, just Google food banks near me and see if there's a group around there that uh, that you can help out. Um, and in the meantime, just type, type the words food bank into the chat here for nothing, for free, and uh, you're going to win a fantastic prize at the end of the show. Thank you, John. Uh. I would like to first mention that we have our annual Go for the Gold tournament. If you, for everyone who has ever won a silver pin, of which there are not that many, Mm -hmm. uh, that's a very select list. On Wednesday, April 19th, we will be having the Go for the Gold tournament. If you have not signed up for the uh, tournament, go ahead and follow the instructions on the website for that. And there will be one last time on April 10th for our, with our mm. March Tournament of Champions in order to win your way into that. And I will – if you win that event and that's your first silver pin, you will be eligible for the Go for the Gold Tournament as well. Although from what I understand, uh, John, you've called dibs on winning that night. Is that correct? That is my plan. However <laughs> – my plans do not always equal reality. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to it. I want to be the person who wins the very first ever uh, Rec Poker Gold pin. That sounds pretty cool. I don't want to see any asterisks on it either. If I do, I'm winning that baby uh, free and clear. You know, if you win it, isn't it almost an asterisk a mandatory, by definition? Yeah. <laughs> mandatory asterisk. Yeah. For sure, there for Jim. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Must have been some oh, chicanery going point. on over here. Yeah. No, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> okay, March 27th, apple of my eye, Harry, Harold Berry got his oh, first nice. nightly victory for the year. Mudslinger, 1942, got his first nightly victory for the year. Jack, That's Jack Pastel. I should actually say that because it, it's not doxing him. He wants his name announced. Uh, yeah, Diggy Jack. Eight Graves, Chris Simenu got his second victory for the year lefty 19 private got his or her second victory nightly victory for the year bruce k 54 bruce Kiefer got his first nightly victory for the year 
Aces54320. Kathy Chang got her first nightly victory for the year. Then Aces54320 got her second daily mixed victory for the year. 17th lifetime victory. Back to back. back same to night. Back. Uh, East Code Spitter Ben and Flow. Got his go, first international victory for the year. Everest Paws, Matthew Craven, got his oh, first sweet. international victory for the year. And Apple of My Eye, Harold Barely, did wow. the bookend trick and won the <laughs> LPP event. So he can contact Jim at Rec.Poker rec. for his free month at Learn Pro Poker. Yeah, congratulations, Harold, for the bookend award and Kathy Chang for the back to back, the back to back award. Um, Harold, you're going to you're going to love a free month to learn pro poker. They were one of our first learning partners. And anytime you enter our uh, Sunday free to enter play money home game and win it, or if Ryan LaPlante is winning and you take him out as a bounty, you earn a free month at learn pro poker. So. Uh, do go and check that out. Harold, send me that email, jim at rec.poker, and we'll get you all set up. Um, and Ben Enslow, that home game wasn't the only thing that you've won recently, I think. Can you talk a little bit about uh, something that you may or may not have qualified for with yes. one of our friends? So you, you teased it a little bit there with the 100K Studios uh, with them. You could win a, f- a free month with them. So I uh, I actually won a free month on Lewis, Lewis Mitchell's channel. It's Sir with five hours, I think, something like that. Oh, yeah. He, he, uh, he gifted me a free month. I got in, started playing some of the league games, and instantly I was like, well, they got me now. <laughs> 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 I think the first tournament that I played in, and then, nice. of course, I had to play some more. So... Um, I didn't get there in March. I got because I got in halfway through March, but in April I decided that I would I would put in the grind and try and win it outright. Hopefully, um, that was the goal. Um, but I ended up just qualifying because what had what actually ha- happened was the person in first they actually binked a tournament, and if you bink one of the league tournaments or if you get first place in one of the league tournaments, you automatically qualify. So when he won that tournament, it automatically put them in first place. But because they won, they had qualified. So because I was in second place and I hadn't qualified yet, I got the qualifier spot. So not what exactly what I wanted, especially oh, no. for how hard I worked in the last couple, like the last two weeks, I really put the boots down um, mm-hmm. trying to trying to lock it up. But it was just just couldn't make it happen in the last couple of days. So. But yeah, it was still nice to qualify. So uh, I think it's April 29th. They're doing it on Poker Pastors channel, I believe. They're going to be live streaming the actual championship game. So, And you can still qualify this month. So get in there and try and get qualified. Because they're giving away two packages to the Colossus, I believe. And it's travel expenses and stuff like that included as well. I believe it's $1,400 package. Two of them. So... Yeah, and only four people have qualified so far, and all you got to do is win a tournament, <laughs> <laughs> or or yeah. get the points at the end. They, they've done some cool stuff with the points as well. They've changed up from last month. There's some different things you can do to get points and stuff. So yeah, looking forward to uh, getting in there again, and maybe maybe I can maybe I can lock it up. Even if, even though I've qualified, it's still nice to get. It's like the rec poker pins. You want to go for the you want to go for the gold. So. Yeah, you want to lock it up. That's awesome, yeah. Ben. Um, well, good luck, man. I know we're going to be rooting for you. And um, hey, like you say, you got all month. You never know. You exactly. can uh, go lock lock it up for real uh, in the month of April. Um, Rob Gardner is uh, part of uh, 100K Studio, so if folks don't know. Um, that's how we started started collaborating a little bit. Uh, Rob was in the booth for Marek Madness a few weeks ago. And if you want to find out more about 100K Studios, just head over to 100kstudios.tv. And um, as Ben says, there's still some time to join their uh, to join their club and win some qualifiers this month. Now I see we've got one lonely contestant in the raffle here. Um, Chris, do you have a one-sided die by chance? Because I would like to introduce a level of randomization into this. <laughs> no, that 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 feels like that's that's two-sided. No, can you? Uh, what are your interdimensional chops, Chris? Can we get to a uh, 
It just <laughs> it depends if you count on this role as this being a one role. If this is a one role, I don't. As this oh being, yeah, I no, know. I'm the guy you want. I'm the guy you want yeah. rolling. For, for just, this would be the one time you wouldn't roll a one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I was just thinking you could roll a four sided dice, and as long as it comes in four or less, that means mm. that the first player has won. Let's let's try that, Chris. Um, I know you've been itching to roll that four sided die. Uh, how about let roll roll the four sider, and if it comes in four or less, so one to four, that's Evil Roy, who's the person who's typed food bank in, and then anything below one or anything higher than four is going to be a reroll. I think it's the one. It's, it's just the, the one, one on looks, the bottom. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. John and I are nerdy enough to be able to tell you without hey, even hey, looking Chris, at it. Chris, Chris, before you announce it. Oh. <laughs> it is. Wait, Joe, before, jump in. Before, before you do it, let's make this interesting and make it about the food bank, okay? You've got a four-sided dice, right? Roy, yeah. Roy is one. Every time you roll a die and it doesn't hit a one, I will give 10 bucks to my food bank. Oh, that's a great Just promotion. Just do it until we roll a one. Yeah, until right? we roll a one. Until we roll a one. Yes? It is, it's always a top. Yeah. Oh, okay. it, it should be the one that's the same on all sides. So if it's yeah, um, maximum oh, hundred dollars though. Maximum hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, look at that right. one. See, this one's mine's on the other. Mine's on the yeah. other side. That's that's yeah. No, but you do. You got the magical stuff. The purple ones. Okay, ten bucks. Joe, you're the best. I love this. This is awesome. All right. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, wait, wait. Uh, specific gym rolls. <laughs> they can't hear you, Chris. Oh, they can't hear Chris. That's okay. So I'll, I'll uh, just, uh, just clear. we've got a we've got a four, a three, to two. No, no, I can hear you. Can they? Can they? Can no one else hear you? I can hear. Well, you. Maybe no one else can hear you. Oh, it might be. It might be. A uh, it's a be. microphone thing because I updated. It's the, I updated OBS, so it, it went to my uh, phone. I just switched it. There that's you go. So frustrating. Anyway, uh, <laughs> it's a three. Okay, that's that's four rolls so far. Glad I said the maximum. Yeah, that, that was a is smart another play. three. The threes are hot I, tonight. I'm, so, I'm, I'm I'm not trying to do this, and I'm not lying here. All right. <laughs> There's a one. There's a one. Uh, All right. <laughs> Fifty bucks. Fifty bucks to the food bank. Then that's so. amazing. Well done. And so thank you to everyone um, for not showing up in the chat tonight. Because if there had been multiple people in the chat, we wouldn't have been able to wring fifty dollars out of Joe for a good cause here. Um, Joe, you have been such a good spirit about this food bank stuff. Uh, your generosity is uh, appreciated. I know I'm not going to be visiting your local food bank, but but um, I know how much it means to the people in your area. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. That's such a wonderful contribution. Well, I always feel that you need to lead by example. And I hope that my example will give some people the idea because um, I mean, one of the things that if you, if I can take it, since I have put $50 into the food bank, if I can, <laughs> yeah, 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 something, so. maybe, you know, <laughs> um, yeah, please, you know, in the United States, I don't know if a lot of people realize that the pandemic uh, 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 um, food uh, supplemental uh, monies are running out. They're actually going to end. I think actually they may have ended recently. So a lot of people that you see on the street that used to have access to food do not anymore. Uh, and as Jim always says repeatedly, you'd be surprised at the people that actually were needing that uh, food sustenance. Um, nobody wants to be hungry. Um, you know, I spend a lot of time working out because I have too much food and never am hungry if I don't want to be. <laughs> So nobody should have to deal with that in at least two of the richest countries in the world. And so that's why I think it's important. And I, it just pleases me to know end that Jim had started that as, as a way to use some of this as a platform. So kudos to you, Jim. Oh, cheers, man. Well, it's, uh, it's a difference that we can all make in the world around us. It's a great ROI on your time, money, or donations. Um, so thanks to 100K Studios for offering that prize. They got this whole thing started. Uh, Joe, you're a great guy. I appreciate that. And uh, Chris, way to way to just keep rolling those threes and fours. Like that was that was really nicely done. Uh, full full marks there. Yeah, you had to um, you had to sw- you had roll back there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We we should have like a, an ISO cam. We should have like a yeah. die cam set up for some of these. On, like, I've been a looking at how how I could do that. I don't know. It, it would be tough to set it up, but yeah. I love it. Well, actually, what, just what get see? another computer, join the Zoom thing, have the camera on the that dice. Could, that could work. There that you go. That could work. Yeah, yeah. 
All right. Well, you never know. Um, Might be able to use your iPhone or an iPad, too. You don't necessarily need another computer. Yeah. If you happen to have one of those other devices. There, I do, right? Break on my phone right here. Right. All right. Well, there you go. I have a a little uh, tripod for my iPhone so I can use it as a camera if I want to. So Mm. that should should be very doable, I think, Chris. Okay. Okay. Nice. A tripod for your iPhone. They should call that an iPod. Uh, that would be a great way of trying to get at both of the uh, uses. No, there's for already it, right? a thing it's, such as an iPod. Well, I don't think not in Canada. Not, not I don't anymore. Think so. I know. Oh, it hasn't I gotten know. there yet. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm in the United for this States crowd. right now. I'm oh, all right. Young for this crowd. <laughs> I'll look forward to that when we eventually get it. That sounds really cool. Uh, a tripod for your iPod. A tripod for your iPhone. That's amazing. Amazing. The iPod. Cool. So cool. It's amazing technology these days. Um, <laughs> all right. So, folks, uh, don't forget. Peel is <laughs> Peel is back this week on Thursday night. It's a later starting time for you West Coasters to go and have some fun with Eric Jin. It's a great way to learn um, and to learn about other players and their thinking as you play. Um, again, don't forget to check out the Twitter and Facebook pages this week for some great deals. And do head over to the Rec Poker forums. Um, we're going to be looking at a meetup sometime in the last couple of weeks of June down in Las Vegas. And uh, if you want to have a say into when it is, and if you maybe wanted to phrase some costs by finding a platonic roommate for a hotel room stay or an Airbnb or something like that, um, that's the place to go drop your dates. The days on the calendar that you'll be there. And uh, we can hopefully make a plan and uh, unite a few folks to have some fun because it's all about the community. And this is going to be a road trip uh, that we are looking forward to. So, um, Evil, so is, it, think- is it down in Las Vegas or is it up oh. to Las Vegas? Well, we this can't side, all be I'm down. I'm confused. Oh, Rob. <laughs> it's down. It's down. Rob. Rob just can't stop giving us the gears about this beautiful weather down there in Arizona. Every time we get together talking about Chris was digging out a nine feet of snow the other day, getting himself to running aces. Rob's just chirping in his ear about how beautiful the weather is down there. I swear, we're all going to be taking great uh, relief this July and August, Rob, yeah. when you're hanging out the door with the air conditioner on That's you. That's the prime shirt. time. That's when, yeah. Back to, uh, yeah. Well, you'll be, he'll probably come That's back when, to Minnesota. Like when this the guy's pa- got it all figured when the, out. When the pavement starts melting and, like, sure. that's it. That's, that's... <laughs> that doesn't happen. Oh, that doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> that hasn't yet, anyway. I just go out on the sidewalk, fry my eggs, and then, you know, <laughs> yep. that's my breakfast in the morning. It's no big deal. Yeah, yeah. I forgot you were a keto guy. Or no, that's the uh, – that's, no, no, that would be keto. Okay, good stuff. That, that was going to be funnier than I thought it was. Never mind. Um, uh, so, yeah, so Evil Roy, send me that email, jim at rec.poker. You've won a free month at 100K Studios, and I'm sure you're going to have some fun over there. And uh, you're used to winning things, um, so maybe you can sneak in with Ben. And oh, win the qualifier there goes this chances. month or still to I know there it goes, oh, right? Oh great. Yeah, still had got plenty of time. It was all fun and Those games. <laughs> no, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Lifetime Achievement in the home game. He's gonna come in and wreck it over at 100 k Studio. So yeah, Dave, send me that email. And otherwise, I just want to thank uh Tara Smith, um, Joe Coolis, Rob Washam, John Somsky, Ben Enslow, Chris Jones, the Running Aces Hotel Racetrack and Casino, and of course, um, all of you for being here in the YouTube chat and for listening along and for subscribing. Thank you all so much, and we'll see you next week.